Hey, Taj has one of those big mics now. Yeah. I, I just walked into his room and I'm like, what in the world is this? Um, and he's like, mom, if you want to use it, you can. I'm like, not a chance I'm going into your room. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so we've established. Hmm? So we've established you're a mom. You have a Taj. Yeah, I have a Taj. I have a Taj. He's 16. Ooh. Yeah. It's awesome to have a 16 year old. How come? Uh, cause they're in, he's independent. He's independent. He has his, like, he's good. I, didn't I tell you, I, I taught, taught him how to drive a stick shift last week. <laughs> so you don't brush his teeth still? No, I try not to. I do like, like an annoying mom go in and be like, did you wash your face? Did you take a shower? Um, but like only from the doorway. <laughs> I've been, uh, I've been having to explain to my kids a lot lately that I own them, but they like, they, 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 yeah. You and I, I talked about I, this where we kind of do, right? Like, like what's the whole goal in parenting? Sorry, it has my like my view. Come to sit in you here. Look, you look great. We're having a little bit of an audio hiccup. Let me see if it's me. It, it's probably me. Do I mean to go put a headset on? Uh no, it's okay. Whatever you're comfortable with. I'll okay, let's talk about one. No, you're good. Let's talk about owning kids. So do we okay. own them? Like I was explaining to my kid that he's my Sistine Chapel the other day. Like I like he's my greatest creation. That's beautiful. That's actually really beautiful. Um, you know, it, it took me a couple of years to, to realize, first of all, that was Sistine and not 16. Um, <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> um, so there's a whole bunch of different parenting styles, right? Um, and we've talked about it before you and I have is, you know, more of an authoritarian type of um, paternalistic a little bit more versus a permissive uh, parenting stop. And currently, um, you know, actually it was more about 10 years ago where I thought that there was just a lot more of this permissive parenting stop. And one of the like, best ways for me to explain it is like a parent educator would say, if a kid says to like, let's say our kids say to us, mom, you're not the boss of me. Well, the right answer would be to say, okay, you're right, Taj, you're the boss of you. What things do you need to do to make this happen? And I've always been not so permissive. <laughs> I'm like, no, here's the deal. I'm the boss of you. Yes, my job is to make, to, my job is to guide you so that you are an awesome adult. You know, somebody I want to be around. That's my, it's, it's, I'm not, but I'm not your friend. I'm not, this is not, you know, this is not a democracy here where it's like, okay, what do you want to do? What do I want to do? It's, this is, this is what's done. And it is definitely, it's something I've seen with this sort of, um, the last, you know, 20 years that I've been working as a pediatrician is that there's so many people that, you know, they come into the office and it's like, oh, you know what? Johnny doesn't want to be weighed. Okay. I don't even know why that was an option. That's not an option. You're at the doctor's office, you get weighed. I, we didn't ask you. There are, some, of course, a lot of things that we need them to make choices and we need them to like voice their, we want them to have a voice, but that doesn't mean we teach them to the whole world revolves around that person. It's not really a good way to raise somebody to live in this world, right? I, I, I most realize it every time I brush their teeth. I brush their teeth like they're my teeth. And if my, and if my kids had cavities, I would feel 100% responsible. I brush their teeth at night. They brush their teeth in the morning. We each get a shot at it. But like, um, like they're my teeth. They're like, I, like I own the responsibility and I'm also like aware that at 13 or at 18, that they might cut the umbilical cord and it might be very painful for me. But until then, yeah, you asked, what is my, what is my goal in a recent podcast? I mentioned that it just came out of my mouth. My goal is I'm trying to make good mates, good citizens, but also good mates, like not in the sense of the way Australians use it, but in the sense of the way Americans use it. Yeah. I want someone to want to spend the rest of their life with them and, and then be able to contribute to that, to that relationship. Right. And, and have them, them be happy. Right. So if right, they're right. assholes, of course. they're not going to be right. If, if, if they're, or let's say they don't have teeth, right. That's not going to be good for them. Um, no, I used to do the same thing. I used to do Taj's. Maybe, sorry, day. sorry. Maybe, maybe, real quick. Maybe it's not my goal. Maybe it's a litmus test of my actions. Sorry. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Meaning if I'm doing something, is it making them a better mate? But you're right. My goal really is that they're happy, that they can generate their own happiness. Sorry. Go ahead. No, but it's, but it's all of it. It's happy, but also to be good um, members of their community, right? And that means to be a good friend, to be a good mate, to be, and by good, I don't mean like they're always perfect. I just mean that 
um, you know, they're resilient things, things that we all talk about, but how can you be resilient if we're, if we don't, um, if it's always like, what do they want to do? Right. right, if, right. if it's always like, oh, okay. He, he wants this today. Oh, you know what? He doesn't want to go to school until 1230. No, you go to school when you go to school. That's the time you go. Yeah. Um, an example of this is gum chewing. I, my kids are three and five and I see other kids who are three and five chewing gum. And I seriously, I cannot get my head wrapped around that. I don't know how a kid gets a piece of gum in his mouth if he has a parent. I just assume if I see a kid chewing gum, he doesn't have parents. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sorry. Like, I, I know there's people at home being like, well, I give my gum, kid gum. Everything's okay in moderation. I just, maybe something's wrong with me. I cannot get my in the head wrapped around why you would put gum in a kid's mouth. Yeah, so I love what you just said about everything's okay in moderation. That's a whole three hours we can spend <laughs> Everything's okay in moderation. I remember um, Dale once said, he's like, you know what? Drano's not okay in moderation, right? Like when people right. say everything's okay in moderation, how about some Clorox? No. A little I'm bit of sorry. peanut butter in your, a little bit of peanut butter in your gas tank of your car, just a little bit. No. <laughs> and no so um, I used to always like crack up because, so I would chew, this is not about parenting anymore, but I'll chew gum. What, there's two reasons to chew gum, right? One is because there's no breath mint around and we've eaten. I just like, I, I just can't have bad breath. Like I can't go like eat and then go to a concert or <laughs> go eat and then go to a sporting event. Um, and then the other reason why is to just stop eating, right? <laughs> no, right. <laughs> I'm totally kidding about the second one. You're like at dinner, you're at a party. And I'm just like, okay, enough of this food. <laughs> Let me just what, what, did you, what did you eat today? Well, I had two pieces of gum and three packs of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm laughing stuff because I um I just would always like just know as soon as I came around Greg I'm like oh god I got to get rid of this gum because I knew he just couldn't stand the gum. So oh I'm yeah, like, he's he's not a gum chewer at all. Oh no, and I used to like how can I get rid of this? <laughs> how can I put it in, make my breath smell better for everybody, and then get it out? So you would always have mints or the lister, lister mint or whatever listerine. Yeah, there's Listerine strips. I'm addicted. Yeah. So, so I know you through CrossFit. You are a pediatrician. A pediatrician is a doctor who specializes in patients who are 18 and under. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Like zero to 18, zero to 18 plus until they they cut the umbilical cord. And you have a practice, and so, and actually, maybe it's not zero to 18. It's actually before. It's like from insemination, right? to 18 like you're yeah, taking, you take care of kids <laughs> you take care of kids even when they're in the belly right i mean yeah we we um a little bit a little bit more so like at the, as soon as they're born and um your practice is in san diego california yeah i have and, two practices in, in in del mar and como valley and um, my kids are three and five. I detest doctors. I can't stand taking my kids to doctors. Doctors have nothing for me. And yet the second my kid hurts himself, I take 20 pictures and bomb you <laughs> <laughs> at 9 p.m. and become the world's biggest hypocrite. No, and, well, uh, well, that's okay. That's okay. We're all hypocrites. Um, but there's a place for doctors, right? Like there's a place. And I, it's interesting because, you know, as doctors want a place for that too. Sometimes I'll be like, I can't answer everybody's problems or I can't solve everything, right? But there's a place for us as physicians. And, you know, there's a place for us along with, um, along with parents and parenting, which is where I think the majority of it comes. We're here to help out with parenting because we have so much experience with it. But um, the majority of what I do is actually medical. And so if, you know, hopefully you're doing a lot of things so that you don't need the medical care. Uh, tell me, what, is, what do you mean medical? Like, so what? if you have um, pneumonia, <laughs> right? Or an, a urinary tract infection. So infections, um, you know, th those kind of things. Like stuff with your heart. Um, the, have kids, you ever... Hmm, go ahead. Ha have you ever prescribed gum? No, no. But that was, <laughs> no, that was actually a thing though. Like about 10, 15 years ago, they were doing like Zorbital gum for, to, um, um, to help like cavities. And I'm like, why in the world would you chew gum for that? Right? Yeah. Just stop no. eating sugar. I've never, right. But I've never prescribed gum 
to stop eating. It's actually, a, a, someone told me that though. Someone said, okay, you know what? I just throw a piece of gum in my mouth and would drink parties because I can't do all this food all over the place and just start eating. I thought that was pretty clever, but. Maybe, maybe I just thought of a reason maybe to give your kids gum, maybe on an airplane to help their ears pop. Right, right. I mean, I mean then it has a function. Right, but, but then I don't want to see that piece of gum on the bottom of my, that's, that's the real issue. It's like dog pets versus pet owners. It's this, that's all what parenting is, right? We're the pet owners. Um, but we don't, I don't want the gum on the bottom of my um, table or my, I, don't, I just don't want to step on gum. And, I, and I'm assuming parents give it to their kids because they're just afraid to say no. I mean, I'm open to other reasons, but for me for right now, like the placeholder is that, is that parents make bad decisions because they're afraid to say no. I think they're afraid to say no, but I also think that they're afraid to parent sometimes, which means that there's a lot of things that I see parents do just to keep their kids sort of calm because like having your kid just sit there and be bored would not be an option, which is it, it should be. Like having some patience is a really important um, ability right now with all of these cell phones and all they do is just get immediate dopamine release with everything they do a quick like hit everything on their phones on there and then people say my child doesn't have a phone but then they have an ipad okay come on like <laughs> right they oh we don't have it we don't watch tv but then we have an ipad so all of that keeps their brains just wired to just need a dopamine hit every you know five seconds so then the same thing happens they don't have their screens and they just want something to do so the parents just give them gum my my Ego would never let me even use that word bored. I feel like it's a reflection. It's it would be like admitting crazy weakness. Like I would never say I'm bored. And the other day, my obviously six just turned six, and I heard him say I'm bored, and I gave him the whole lecture. Like like, hey man, that's just a reflection of you. That's like if you're bored, all that is is talking about you and that your inability to be happy by yourself. And I don't know if any of it sunk in, but I gave him the whole like. I never want to hear you use that word. It's push that word down. I just, I just see it as an unnecessary. It's, it's a, it's a weakness you should never admit you have. I really like that. I like that you talk to him about it. I love that you just, you know, kids understand. It's interesting. Like I have six month olds that I say stuff like I'll say, Hey, I'm going to look in your ears now. And they understand kids understand a lot. And, you know, if they didn't understand, it's not a big deal, but it's really nice to talk to them. And, and I like what you did though, is you just said, no, you know what? No, not a chance. As opposed to the, like the, some of the current parenting um, philosophies would say, okay, talk to him about like, why are you bored? What makes you bored? What other, you know, and that's great too. I think that there's a place for some of that, but I also like the, Hey, you know what? That's on you. If you want to be, if you want to be bored, that's on you figure out why you're bored. And, and figure out if that's working for you because it's not. I, I it, there's a bunch of words I don't like him using because I'm I'm a believer that naming is the origin of all particular things. It's a it's a Taoist saying. I don't like them. Like I would if he he does a jump and he misses, he goes dang it, fine. But I don't like the word disc. I would even I would even be okay with an f bomb to tell you the truth. But I don't like him to use the word hate or disgusting. Like he'll be like that's disgusting. I'll be like what. That's a pretty strong word. What's disgusting? I don't I, like why I don't want him painting a reality with things disgusting in it. You know, I want to give him an, uh, a a palette of words that makes life like it is for me. Right. Like you can't like this. Awesome. Right. But don't be like, okay, that's stupid. That's the kids will say that. Um, the hate thing's yeah. interesting because a lot that's a, a common um, a, something that a lot of parents don't want their kids to say hate or be around that word hate. And, and sometimes I'm just like, well, some things I really do hate. Like I right. think kids hate shots. They probably hate shots. <laughs> um, there was something you said right there. Like, 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 let's say there's a, like the other day there was a Jerusalem beetle in the house. Do you know what those are? They're usually like in the dirt and they're big and they look like aliens. They're crazy uh-huh. looking. Um, so, right. I would, I would reprimand you if you were my kid for saying that. Um, that was disgusting. That is disgusting. Yeah. And, and, and one I of my kids goes, oh my God, it's disgusting. disgusting. And I was like, no, no, no. Poop on the bottom of your shoe is disgusting. <laughs> this is a beautiful beetle. Like what? <laughs> I'm like, get it out of here. Get it out of here. Kill it. The, um, we're, I've already taken 15 minutes of your time. And the real reason why I wanted to talk to you today was... COVID. More and more, I'm seeing kids wear masks. 
Uh oh, it says the internet connection is unstable. More and more, I'm seeing kids wear masks. So I'm going to a Can coffee you put it on shop. Pause for a second. You want me to go? I want to go into the other room. I'll go into the other it's room. Okay. You okay. haven't been stuttering at all, so it's good. Um, the everywhere I go, I see I see masks on little kids, and there's a couple of reasons. I don't want to. I'm not trying not to teach my kids about social distancing and masks. And the reason why is because I'm noticing I'm already getting some behaviors from it, right? Like when I see people, I don't know how close I'm supposed to get to them. I, I, I hear my mind start up. And one of my goals in life is to not have my kids mind be going right. I don't want to introduce things that cause them to have pathologies or loops running. And so my kids don't wear masks. I don't teach them about social distancing. Obviously, when we're out, I try I have them be courteous. And I, and I kind of phrase it differently. But what what are one are kids in danger? Like I can't I never hear about kids dying. And when I do, I see, I see things around it that make me go, okay, this wasn't necessarily COVID. This kid was in trouble anyway. Right. Okay. So there's a whole lot of questions there. So number one, are kids in trouble um, for the overwhelming majority? No, not, not, not enough for us to be worried. I'm much more worried when I see uh, influenza in every winter during flu season than I, than I am about COVID for kids. Okay. COVID is actually sparing kids. Um, overall, there's been, um, the last number I saw was 187 deaths, which is, um, in, you know, in the country or the world in, in, it, it, in the country. Um, okay. it was very, it's very, very small. The number of deaths is extremely small with COVID. Um, and remember everything's getting attributed to COVID COVID right now. Like you could, you know, trip and get hit by a car and you died of COVID. Um, and so the numbers are really low. I'm not worried about kids getting COVID. In fact, I'll argue that um, the kids, the older kids, the teenagers, young adults that are getting COVID are actually helping the situation because they're building a herd immunity where they're the, they're the strong and the healthy. Okay, we all know at this point that COVID is, um, is affecting the, those with chronic disease more severely. So 94, probably plus percent of deaths in COVID are in those with chronic disease, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, right? And so those are not the, the diseases that are affecting three-year-olds, five-year-olds. Um, the other question is how much do kids transmit COVID? And kids probably transmit COVID a lot less. Having said that, they don't not transmit it. Okay. You can yeah, what do you mean? How my kids seem like they would be the ultimate transmitters. They just right. drag their hands on everything, every railing, every door. Yeah. Then they put it in their mouth. Yeah. Then I see them trying to touch their brain through their nose. Yeah. Um, what do you mean they're not good transmitters? I, 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 I resent that. My kids are amazing transmitters of disease. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, there, there's actually studies that show that. So when you look at where um, in a family where um, the – the, they actually did a really cool study um, in Europe that looked at the actual, um, they looked at the specific viruses and they, they could tell where each person got it. And, you know, did it go from the child to the parent to the grandparent or did it come in from the adult and then spread? And so when you look at those studies that it, it is not coming from a kid and spreading it to too many people, okay? Um, but they can spread. So it's not a no. That's not a no. So, so First, is it deadly and severe in children? It's not. Can kids get COVID? Yes, they can. What I see, by the way, what I see for COVID in my office is like almost nothing. So kids with almost always like, oh, I, didn't, I wouldn't have even known it was COVID. Maybe a little bit of fatigue, maybe a little bit of a runny nose or a little bit of a cough, and that's it. A low-grade fever. It's not like flu where they're looking really sick. Um, the kids with COVID are very mild for the majority of them. Okay. So then, and then the question is, can they transmit it? And so that goes to the whole question that you can then get to is, do they need to wear masks? Um, do they need to wear masks? I'm going to ask that actually the, the more important question is, what is it doing to them to be wearing masks? Right? So someone asked me this the other day, like if my, is my kid going to just think the whole world makes is, is is weird or is just off because all they are used to is seeing people with masks on. And as I actually agree that we've lost our marbles, I 100% agree. And in California, we're, we're just weird. I've had people visit and they're just like, this is, California is just bizarre because not only are we like all afraid of COVID, 
but then people aren't wearing masks and they're not social distancing, but then they're afraid of everything. It's just the weirdest place in, it's just, it's just strange. It's like we have no collective uh, philosophy on what's going on or approach. Um, having said that, I think our kids are actually going to do okay. And the reason why is they are resilient. And if you look at, you know, 1918 and 1919, within about, it was, you know, one to two years, the mask wearing was gone, the hysteria was gone. And so our kids are, they, they're very quick to adjust. They're going to kind of remember this as something weird, but they're going to, they're going to adjust. The majority of kids that are preschool, so below the age of five are typically in situations where they're not wearing masks anyways. Most three-year-olds don't spend too long outside of the house, right? They're in the most, a lot of the preschools here in California too, the, the preschools aren't mask wearing. And so they're going to be okay. I think kindergarten to me is just the most awful age right now because kindergarten is where they learn so many of their social skills. And I mean, that's, I, I think kindergarten is like the, the most important year for kids and they're having to go to school. Most of them with the ones that can go to school, you know, what? that's my big topic is going to school. I think all kids should be going to school. Um, but the kindergarten is when they're going to school, they're supposed to be learning social skills and they have masks on. Having said that kids are resilient. They're going to get past this. I mean, it's, we're making such a big deal of these masks. And I agree that they're, it's, it's weird but they'll get past it, what we really need to get. I mean, we have to think about it. We're talking about all that. And the truth is, is the majority of people that are concerned about mask wearing have let their three-year-old be on an iPad. If we wanna talk about weird, what's really weird is how our kids really are lacking social skills because they're on their computers all day long, right? And so they'll get past this because we're not gonna do mask wearing forever. I mean, it's gonna be a year. I, I, um. I spoke to a fourth grade teacher the other day and um, he, he I, I told him, I said, hey, I think teachers, should, we should just double their pay. I think they're, because they're dealing with so many kids and so many of these, and although you're saying they're not, you know, the, the, these great transmitters, I just see them as these amazing germ collectors, at least my kids. They were like world-class. They are germ, germ collectors. collectors. They are transmitters, but not so much of COVID. So they okay. are, we, you know, I, I don't know about doubling your pay. You, should, you shouldn't double my pay because I, I chose well, to be well, the well, let me explain this only because I'm seeing this use of money go in other ways. That seems ridiculous. I just heard yesterday on the radio, a list of all the precautions you should be taking for COVID. And it was like, wear a mask, wash your hands. It was all these things. And I kept going. And the number one thing that I kept wanting them to say, and the number one thing that will get you to the 95 yard line of being safe from COVID is re remove all refined sugar, uh, refined carbohydrates and sugar from your diet. I've never heard the news mention that. Now, I don't listen to a lot of news or watch a lot of news. It's just a few minutes every day in the car. But I cannot believe I'm not – am I wrong on that? Is that – if there was one thing you could do, either wear a mask or cut out refined carbohydrates and sugar, which would you do? Oh, wait. You're asking the wrong person. I mean, <laughs> no, you are because – so – so. I mean, in order, in order to help fight COVID. Well, in order to help fight COVID, I think that the whole messaging and the direction has been totally wrong. Right. We do need to we, we don't need to focus on locking down our thriving um, world. And it's not even about the economy. It's about well-being. We have more than 50 percent of people are depressed. There's depression. There's anxiety. This is not normal. So all of the side effects of what we're doing are so great because we've missed the focus. What we needed to be doing is focusing on the elderly and the high risk, which is the chronic disease. Right. And so I've always said that, like, we should have taken all of the young adults and let them go to college and lock it up for eight, eight weeks. They'll all have COVID. They'll be done. They'll be immune. But instead, we basically took COVID and locked it up inside nursing homes, which makes absolutely no sense. We're still not doing enough messaging for people to understand that, you know, it, it was the whole hashtag stay home. Everybody is like is being um, shamed for for not staying home. And people are still doing that to some degree, right? Having said that, it's not stay home. It's stay home if you're sick. If you're sick, so that's where I'll disagree. I think if you're sick, I don't want to just take out refined sugar to know, because I can still get COVID. I'll just get it mild. And I don't even want to get it right now. I don't want to be sick. And I don't think that's just with COVID. I think that's with the flu. I mean, 
right? Last winter during ho every holiday season, we have to go to parties and give somebody a hug and someone's going to say to you, oh, I have the flu. And I'm just like, why right. do you have, why are you here with the flu? <laughs> you not know, how, right? Like what is wrong with you? That is, that's disrespectful and rude. And so that's what it comes down to with the mask for me is, you know, if you ask any doctor, I'm, I'm not going in to see patients with COVID or the flu without a mask on. Um, I've always done it with the flu. Most people don't. So it's like sort of like this like big question as to this is the biggest question that we've never asked and we should be asking is how are we going to approach this as a society? Do we go back to 2019 where physicians would actually take care of people with the flu without a mask on? Or do we treat it like we did with meningitis when you know if we have a kid with meningitis, we have a mask on, everything like that. So I actually do think masks work. I know that there's all these like they work, they don't work, they do. I'm gonna stand by the fact that I'm gonna wear a mask. Am I gonna wear a mask when I'm with a bunch of people who don't have COVID? Do I believe that everybody's having asymptomatic shedding that's going to come spread and I'm gonna get it? No, I actually don't, I don't. I actually think what I can do is stay away from people that are sick. If I'm sick, stay home. And the mask wearing is interesting though, because the, I actually think if people would stay home if they were sick, we probably wouldn't need to wear masks. But the problem is, is that people, I mean, school has started and people are calling me to get a note to say that their cold symptoms are allergies. They're not allergies, stay home. And so it just tells me the whole, the psychology of our communities that people don't understand this, the, they don't understand responsibility. And so because of that, people have to wear masks. You know, here's the issue, here's the issue I have. I go into Starbucks, Yep. I'm, I'm wearing a mask because it's it's required by law and there's 17 people in there and there's 32 frappuccinos on the counter and everyone around me at a bare minimum is 50 pounds overweight. I'm in one of the thinnest cities in the in the world, Santa Cruz, California, and we're all wearing masks. And I believe that there's lifestyle choices that individuals could make that could make it so that we wouldn't see any relevance in COVID, that this could all go away tomorrow right. and, but 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 and, and so and so i i just i'm frustrated that um i mean i'm not talking about like three people i'm talking like go into a starbucks and yeah. look at the look at the drink counter it's seven to nine a.m and people are drinking thousand calorie sugar drinks yet they're wearing right. a mask it, it doesn't seem um it's like it's like those people who get the knee replacement when you're 100 pounds overweight and or the hip replacement and i'm just like Hey man, you, you've putting a lot of stress on your joints. 100%. So it's just, it just, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem sincere to me. It doesn't seem, um, oh, do we have just, to pay the price? Do we have to pay the price for every Frappuccino that's uh, for, to, do we have to pay the price because people are having refined carbohydrates and sugar? I mean, bottom line, that's what it is. Every time they go and you get that Frappuccino, I have to sit here and listen to COVID is killing everybody, which it's right. not. It's killing if you're obese, if you're, and we're not barely even talking about that because it's like not even, is it not PC to talk about that? Because now you're going to be talking, you're, you're shaming somebody, which you're not, you're not. Shaming no, somebody. you're trying to save their life. You are 100% not shaming someone. You're not, you're trying to it's save the their lives. If I knew that these glasses were bad for my eyes, I would want someone to tell me. Right. I don't want you to take offense. I don't, I don't. And if I do take offense, that's my problem. I need to know the truth. Right. So there, but are you, have we missed the focus and the main, you know, what's interesting is the China study show that the China study showed this Remember, from in March, we knew this in March. And so, but I, I mean, that was, it feels like a decade ago, but it's, we knew that in March. And so, should our focus be on chronic disease prevention? Absolutely. You would think that this would be where that all that money's going, right? To go, hey, let's actually, or where the messaging, where the messaging is going. By the way, there's so many more cases of COVID, but not so much the deaths, right? And so the mask wearing is completely different. Do I think that people need to wear masks everywhere they go? Um, I had to tell you, it's already slipping, right? Just well, all the trendy coffee shops, those cats make sure they wear them, man. 
Right. But it's, am it's amazing the places that people wear masks. And it's people, already like coming places down. Places they it's, don't. Uh, what places they do and places they don't, right? Um, I'll always have one kind of around my neck. And if I have to get in somebody else's space right now, I don't do it. I don't think I'm, knock on wood, spreading anything. But I actually have rapid tests too. So um, I do them pretty frequently now to just, just to be polite since I'm a healthcare worker. Having said oh. that, um, I, I don't, like if I'm coming close to you, I'm, I, are you sick? I'm not sick. I'll give you a big hug. When I'm at Starbucks, I'm going to put one on when I get yes. into somebody else's space, not yes. because I think I'm shedding or not because I'm worried for them to give me something, but it's just respectful because there yeah. are sometimes like I go hiking all the time and it was so sweet. The other day there was this old man and old woman and the, the couple and I walked by and I quickly, you know, I, I put my mask on and walked by and the guy was like, you could just see it in his face. Like, thank you so much because, because I put my mask on, he can go for a walk. Right. Right. Like right. If he's, he's, if there's so much anxiety around this. I'd rather put a mask on than have people anxious. There are some people that are high risk that are elderly. Um, I mean, I think we need to message the, fa the fact that they need to cut out the sugar. But then here's the problem. If, if we put out that message, then they can't sell the sugar, right? Big business can't sell all the shit food that they sell, all that poison, if they actually put out the message that that's bad for you, right? Uh, oh, I just want to. I mean, I beat my brain against the wall yeah. sometimes. <laughs> it's so easy. It's so it's so easy. I mean, it's hard, but but each individual could make an enormous difference. Right, but the but I mean, no I don't want to blame the I don't want to blame the businesses who are selling sugar. Like for me, it's like it's like the people. It's like, hey, you know. The reason why you ask your doctor if it's okay to have alcohol and coffee when you're pregnant is because you know you shouldn't. Like you just know. Just stop. You already know. Just stop. Just you're just you pregnant. Know. Just stop. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't okay. give you a really good answer, but I think that yeah. we need to focus I think on you did. Like, yeah, I think you did. And it's it, it's it's not so much that there's an answer either. It's like it, it needs some sanity, some words of sanity spoken around it, also. Like and, and I think that's what you did. Let me, let, let, I'm going to, on a final question, because I know you got to go to work. Let me ask you this. This is the most common thing I hear from parents. Oh, but my kid has asthma or I have asthma or I'm scared I have asthma. And I've never heard so much asthma talk as now that there's COVID. <laughs> like do people with asthma, um, sometimes when I work out, especially in the summer or um, I start wheezing at the end of my workout, you know, like I'll, I'll breathe in and I'll hear like a, like a, like something like a little whistle or something it has to be a really crazy home. hot day <laughs> but for the rest of your life you should what stay is this home. what is this asthma thing and is it that um dangerous is is the combination of that and covid that dangerous no i think it's a kind of a cover your ass type of inclusion because um the, you know severe asthma sure right i mean it's if you have severe asthma and there are when you look at the data it's you know I'd like to say moderate to severe, but a lot of people think they have moderate, but that's not the type of moderate we're talking about. We're talking, if you have severe asthma, if you have severe lung disease, you could be at risk for COVID. Um, but in terms of the kids, I'll say that, like I live in San Diego, there have been zero deaths in children with COVID, zero. So I have to find what is, what is high risk? I mean, like how can you have high risk if nobody's dying? And so we can list it because you kind of need to cover your ass. Like if you don't list it, if you're, if they don't list it and somebody with severe asthma catches COVID, it's just a cover your ass thing. Like, yes, there are people with severe asthma that are doing poorly with COVID. The kids, no. And that's what I'm seeing a lot of is my kid has asthma. I can't do this. My kid has asthma. Yeah. Cause a lot of kids have asthma. They do. A lot of kids have asthma. They have a lot of allergies around here. And there's been no kids that have died in San Diego. There's been minimal deaths nationally. So I would say all kids are at low risk for COVID. I mean, the only person I would be like really worried about would be some major heart defect or a major heart transplant type of thing in a kid. Most of the other things, I mean, we have kids in um, our community. We have kids with cystic fibrosis going to school. We have, because, you know, at this point, it's been almost a year. 
and that's a big topic I wanted to talk about, but um, going to school, I mean, let me just say that kids need to be going to school. They need to be going to school. They're safer at school than they are anywhere else that their education, why is school not considered essential? I don't understand that. I mean, all the adults are out playing pickleball and the kids can't go to school. This makes zero sense. And the consequence of not going to school is huge to our community. Um, for us, I don't know about you, but for us, the private schools are all back. So Tosh goes to school. That's why he's up right now. Is I've heard he that. School. Hmm? I've heard that about the private schools. I don't know for cer certain, but yeah. So the teachers are concerned in the public schools. Well, that's not, that's, th there's no difference. There's no difference. Grocery stores, restaurants, every, again, pickleball, every other place of work has gone back, right? Teachers and physician, medical offices, right? Me do you think hospitals have six feet distance? Can you imagine me with my nurse six foot? Can you grab me the scalpel? I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> we are not six feet apart. Nobody is. Nobody is six feet apart. But now all of a sudden, teachers don't want to come back to school because they're too crowded in a classroom. Well, that's the reason why I'm actually okay with masks. Put your masks on and go back to school. There's been no transmissions down here. Of oh, The schools are all open. There's cases of COVID in the school, but no transmission. Okay. If we allow schools to not reopen, there's going to be a bigger and bigger gap between private and public, those who have money and those who don't. And as a teacher, you've done this before. You did it in January. You did it in February, right? There was COVID in your classroom in February. There was COVID in my office in February, right? And then when I say that, people go, you had positives in February? I'm like, we didn't even have tests in February. What are you talking about? Like, I'm saying that if you use your common sense, we were all taking care of COVID in January and February. Teachers were taking care of it. I understand they're scared, but if they go to the grocery store or a doctor's office or a restaurant, that's not, that's not fair. Like they're not actually scared. School is the safest place to be and we have to do it. Otherwise we're affecting those who can't afford private school, single moms. If we're gonna talk about minorities, blacks, different um, you know, um, equalities in this, in this world, in this country, we have to talk about going back to school. Otherwise oh yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a huge inequality happening right now. And the fact that people who are poor, their kids are really suffering from not being in school. And there's studies that show that, by the way, that you can yeah. take a school that's really, really bad and a school that's really, really good. And the kids grow at the same rate where they have the issue is at summertime. The rich parents send their kids to Europe for flute camp. Yep. The poor kids are on the street because the parents are working at the cannery. And that's where the problem happens. And we're doing that. We're exacerbating that right now with um, the current situation. I'd also like to just put everything for anyone who's offended by anything that we're talking about into context for you. Now, listen closely. The other day, and I've heard a politician do this, and I heard Bill Maurer do this. They say this statement, by any means necessary, although we think this is all silly, by any means necessary, we realize the importance of saving lives. And I want to say that is not true. Saving three kids from dying from COVID in the United States, we can't do that by any means necessary. And if that really was our goal, then we should get rid of all swimming pools because swimming pools are the leading cause of death of kids under the age of four and five in most states. You have to put every, everything we're saying into relativity and into perspective. You cannot save every single person from everything. 12,000 people die in the United States from falling downstairs every single year. And the majority of them, the majority of them, just like COVID, are over 70. And so please, when you hear this, it's in, in Shaka says that there are no deaths in San Diego. And you say, well, we can't take the risk and even have one. You're, you're lying to yourself. Today, a child will be hit in a crosswalk and killed in California. Don't lie to yourself and think that like it's worth um, the damage it's doing. We can't, we're not going to get rid of all crosswalks. We can't. Civilization has to move forward. So you have to put the, you have to put your emotions aside and you have to think relatively to the larger right. good. It's a scale. We can't save three kids from COVID and a thousand kids die on the other side of the scale. It, 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 it's idiocy. It's, it's insanity. Which is actually what's happening because I know they're actually dying of suicide. There's so, I mean, kids are dying of suicide. 
mental depression is the mental wellness. The only good thing is, is that we're starting to have enough sanity and um, just people are opening their eyes. And right now, like a lot of the school districts are starting to recognize that they have to go back to school. They, they, there's a push throughout the country that, and the, so, you know, the heads of schools, superintendents, they didn't do this to, because they don't like kids. They love kids and they love education. And so I'm really seeing a trend of people saying enough is enough. And so these people that are crying out and saying, how could you put me in danger? How could you put my child in danger? And then people coming back and saying, our kids are not in danger by going to school. They're in danger by not going to school. So For stop sure. with your hysteric, like the, the hysteria and look at the data. So that's what I find when people say you, how can one life, people like that are just, that are trying to go to your emotion is because they don't have the facts. They don't have the data. They don't have, talk to any pediatrician. We are the ones who've been taking care of COVID. And I say taking care of COVID because I'm not, I've been taking care of hysteria. I actually haven't done anything of any, of anything. I take care of kids with the flu. I take care of COVID. I just go, yeah, stay away from your grandma. Can you please stay away from grandma? Um, but if you talk to us, I'm not, and I have zero concerns about going back to school. I have concerns about not going back to school. And it's one of the things that I've actually probably been most passionate about in my entire career of pediatrics is we have to open schools now. Let's end on what are some best practices that parents can do with their kids? Wash hands, wear masks, take vitamin C, keep them away from the elderly. Like, like what, just off the top of your head, what are some things like? Don't eat sugar. Don't make excuses. Stop making excuses. Don't eat sugar. Do keep them away from the grandparents. When Have a plan. Have a plan for the grandparents when your kids do have COVID. Because it's not a big, you, you weren't worried when your kid came home with the flu, right? We weren't all hysterical. When your child comes home with COVID, it's okay. Have a plan of what you're going to do to anybody high risk, grandparents, that sort of thing. Um, the wearing the mask is um, wear the mask appropriately. So if you're not, if your kids are not going out of the house and they're wearing masks all the time, they're going to be insane. That is not mentally well. So the kids should have, they should have play dates with their friends. You just have to have some ground rules. Nobody's sick. Have I been sick? Are you sick? If you get sick in the next two days, just call each other. So nobody goes around the grandparents. That's it. But you should be having um, social interactions with your kids. I mean, it's like, it, and, and then in the house, I mean, just be, be, don't be insane. Like, Did you give Taj any supplements? Did you give him fish oil or oh, supplements? I mean, no, you yeah. know what? I actually gave him fish oil when he was younger for focus. Um, I think omegas are great for focus. I haven't given him anything now. What I do is keep him away from the sugar. Well, you know what I did do for Taj is in May, I uh, six, you know, talking about brushing kids' teeth, and he was 15. And I said, enough is enough. And I called up one of his best friend's moms and said, these guys are having a play date. And I took him and I dropped him off and I, no mask, no social distancing. The, I don't know what is going on with our world, but this is insane. And so it's probably one of the best things I've done for him. And then Scott actually, as soon That's as- That's awesome. Scott, a play date for your 15 year old. Yeah, I love it. Because all the kids were not allowed to get out of the, they were supposed, remember it was locked down. It was, nothing was open. We got him um, a bike. And then my, um, and then Scott, um, re-enrolled as soon as Invictus opened up, he was, he had to go to, he had to go, he got a membership back up again and he's been going three to four times a week and it, and then, and he's surfing. And so those are so the, no, hmm. so Don't, no, no, supplement, no supplements, but get your kid off of sugar is what you're saying. Off of sugar. Make sure he's, ha make sure he's having social interaction. And do yeah. something to force them to exercise, whether it's surf, ride a bicycle, or go to a CrossFit gym. And, yeah. And then um, the supplements. So just so you know, the big talk is vitamin D. I don't have yeah. a problem if you – so, you know, at first we actually thought that – so people with low vitamin D aren't – so people that aren't doing well may have lower vitamin D. The question is, is, is that a reflection of their poor state of health or is that a vitamin D thing? And vitamin D does have um, some anti-inflammatory properties. So it's probably that it's, it's not a bad thing to take vitamin D. Now, don't just pop a bunch of vitamin D and then not work out and eat shitty, right? Um, but I think those are my main things. It's just 
Stay and stay grounded and level yourself. This world is not on fire or hysterical. Just use some proper common sense. Stay home if sick, wash your hands, eat properly, wear a mask when it's appropriate. Like, like we've talked about the fact that like people that are driving in their cars with masks on, what, what are you doing? Like, and oh, exercising with masks, I find to be absolutely ridiculous. I think that like, I think it's okay to have a mask on when you go to like clusters of places. Like, so if you're at a gym and there's, you know, 15 people, when you're walking in to be polite, put the mask on. But then once you're in your own space, how in the world do you work out with a mask on? Like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Is it dangerous? I, so, well, I'd like to think it's dangerous. You know, those um, we MMA fighters. That's a great answer. I'd like to think it's dangerous. <laughs> it doesn't seem Honesty right. 101. It, yeah. It just, okay. What about, what about the MMA fighters? That's my favorite. Right? Don't they do the math? They have those masks and they train with those to get, to be better fighters. Oh, right. right. So I guess we're all training to be hypoxic, breathing our own carbon dioxide, but those masks don't go in your mouth when you're breathing. Like it, I, I, I really limit my mask wearing, but like sometimes I've worn it like for like, I don't know how people wear it all day, but like I've worn like those cloth ones for like 15 minutes straight. And after a while they start coming in your mouth. Like they pick, they start getting heavy and it's, uh, there's a place for masks. A doctor's office is a place for masks. If somebody has a place of business that they're worried that they're going to get shut down, if you don't, then just put one on. Put, don't be I think a- you're perfect. I think your perfection, your profession is going to be have masks forever now. Oh, my, I you thought got, you just said I'm perfect, which I love that. That was amazing. Yes, you are perfect. Um, you are perfect. <laughs> but, I, but I think your profession is done. I, you're more optimistic than me. I think society is um, going to be severely damaged from this. I think they're going to be think, severely damaged, but I don't think it's going to be the kid from watching people wear masks for a year and a half. I think it's going to be much bigger than that. I think they okay, are going to be affected. It's going to be affected by the fact, I mean, the mask wearing. So people are so like, my kids are not going to be okay if they don't wear a mask. Well, hopefully your kids aren't wearing masks for the majority of the day, because again, the younger kids, the older kids will be fine. They take, dude, the older kids are so, they're much, the teenagers are much better than us. They have taken their masks off and gone to the beach for, and they've gathered for months. They were gathering before adults were even comfortable getting together. An 18 year old at the skateboard shop lectured me because I went in there with my kids not wearing masks and he kicked my kids out of the shop because he said, Hey, yeah. An 18 year old little skater kid manager of this local skate shop here in Santa Cruz at the boardroom lectured me because he said that this whole thing is caused by the fact and it would go away if everyone just wore masks. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, and I just, I just, I don't want to come back at him and be like, actually, it doesn't work that way. But I, I, I just said, <laughs> like, okay. And I, le- and I left the store. <laughs> caused by people who are making no sense, actually. Um, yeah, just leave the store. What, and what's going to happen? Buy it online. It, <laughs> is this a true statement? I want my kids to get COVID so that they can start building the immunity for it so that they're not worried about getting it when they're 80 and it actually makes them stronger humans. No, I mean, that doesn't make that's, sense. Like a, that's a chicken oh. party question. Like, oh. if I go in. Because that's that. I'm glad that doesn't make any sense, but unfortunately, that's where I sit. So, oh, everyone who, <laughs> no, yeah, like, I want my want kids them. to get COVID. I want my kids just, to get COVID. Why don't you just live normally? And if they're going to get COVID, they do. And if they're not, right. They do, right. So, there right. is the whole point, like, that. You, but if you had COVID when you were 12, you have to yes. be less worried about getting it when you're 70. Is that true? Who knows? I mean, it's like saying, okay. I, I think eventually COVID's going to be like rhinovirus or enrovirus, viruses that they do get, they're all, everyone's going to get exposed to it. I'm surprised everyone's not already exposed to it, right? So your kids are right. exposed to it. They already have some form of immunity. I do believe that there is that whole viral load. So this is why I think that if you have asymptomatic shedding, that if I'm around somebody who's asymptomatic shedding, I may actually get COVID without having any symptoms. And if I am in front of somebody who's coughing with a fever and has COVID, I'm, I could end up with a much greater viral load and end up much sicker, right? Okay. So I don't need to have a chicken pox party with COVID. And who wants to, I don't believe in like messing with nature in that way. Because a lot of people said that before. It's like, should I just get it done with adults? Should I just get it done with and be done and move on? And it's like, you know, why don't you just live more normally Yes. And then see what happens. 
because we're not yes. all meant to get it. We're probably all going to form, and we're not going to form antibodies. We may form, you know, um, cell mediated immunity, which is probably what most people did. And right. we're probably, you know, we're not going to test for that, but I mean, you don't have to have a cold every other day. And I don't know if it's going to be that, that the more that you have it, the, the earlier you had it, the better it's going to be when you're 70. I think everybody at this age, if you're 12, everyone's going to have had it by the time you're seven. I, my, and, and you're, and you're right. My whole, I'm 48 years old and I've never avoided sickness. So there's like people who be like, Oh, I'm not going to go there. So-and-so is sick or like, I've never, I don't have that mindset. Right. Like if you have a cold or don't have a cold or like, I, I would never avoid you. Like the only thing like maybe I would avoid is like, I wouldn't sleep with someone if they had AIDS. Like if they were like, Hey, I have AIDS. I would be like, Oh, okay, well <laughs> we're not going to, but, but like, I've never avoided sickness. You're right. And you're right. I wouldn't go out of my way to get it. I wouldn't be like, Oh, so-and-so has COVID. I'm going to go have them spit in my mouth. But, um, you're but right. I, think that's the thing. I just roll. I just roll. Just roll. You just roll. You yeah. stay healthy. You do the best job you can, but I actually avoid sick people. I don't like people like, oh, I threw up this morning, but I was, I'm like, okay, I don't want to throw up tomorrow. I just, I'm not in the mood. Yeah, you, I'm never in the mood. To and you, you're right. You're in a little bit of a different situation though, too, being totally. as a doctor, right? Yeah. But I'll tell you in like my personal life, and I think everybody's different, but I think right now you should be doing something social, be a little bit more go going towards normal, be a responsible, normal person where. And, um, and do something to be healthier. Don't get fatter and drink more alcohol. Totally. Do something the opposite direction. Like we're, huh. we're okay. Okay. We're a lot of people are getting sick supposedly. Okay. They do okay. something to help to take personal responsibility and get healthier. That's actually the biggest thing that if you haven't learned that in 2020, that chronic disease, there's going to be another virus, another virus and another virus. If you haven't figured out that being obese, having diabetes, hypertension is a problem that I don't know what to say. Like if you're still grabbing that Frappuccino every day or whatever it is that you're eating or drinking, I mean, it's, it's, or drinking is the bigger thing, eating and drinking, figure it out. I mean, that, that's absolutely, I mean, I don't mind getting, I don't want to get COVID, but I wouldn't mind getting COVID because I don't have obesity, diabetes, hypertension, right? So, and you exercise. I do exercise. I, I <laughs> exercise and I, and I try, I try and avoid sugar. <laughs> Shaka, thank you. Thank you. I got this whole list of stuff we didn't get to, but uh, talk to you again in like a month. Perfect. Hit me up okay. for like anytime you have like the five, 10 minute, like one question. Should kids go to school? Yes. Awesome. What else? Should, will kids be wearing masks forever? No. It's a temporary band aid for it'll go away. Oh, I love your optimism. It Say hi to it'll, Taj. It'll go and away. Scott. Okay. I will. Tell everyone hi. Bye. Bye. Bye.